it's going to be a pretty start off. Bigfoot. Bigfoot takes it. Barefoot takes the win. It's going to be a war. Bigfoot starts to come on him. Up, 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 both of them. Look out for Mike Witt. He has flipped. Oh, he's got on the hammer and look at that run. Barefoot may have just done it. Barefoot may have just done it. Poncha truck battle is an eight truck elimination. When we'll go down to a final two, a head-to-head -head battle and competition, it could be anybody's race, Samson, Bigfoot, the Virginia Giant, a lot of the fine trucks are here tonight. It's going to be a real, real tough race. And I'll tell you what, when we go down to the last round, it's going to be... It's time for the drag race shooting down. Bigfoot's out the lead, but here's the dual ladder Giant. Bigfoot, they're side by side. They're side by side. It's a shootout. It's a shootout. It's Bigfoot at the finish. It's Bigfoot at the finish. Stopper, and they're off and rolling. Johnny K gets a gate job on him, but the stopper... Oh, we're in trouble. Stopper, engine seems to be going away. Medford stays after it. Almost frustrated driving. Styles. Medford won't be Whoa! Look out! Or will it be an all Chevrolet showdown? We're about to find out. They're even to the turn. The turn could decide it. They're still even. Now over the hill. Morris is ahead, but here comes Gravedigger. And he pulls it out. He pulled it out on the cars, Dennis Anderson. Side by side as they come to the first bump. And there is Bigfoot coming off a little bit ahead. Now powering once again. Awesome song. Really flies. They touch wheels. They touch. They're still going for the line. And we don't have any idea who won it. And here is a look at Scott Stevens in the auto value King Crunch. And he goes up against Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. You know, it's kind of interesting. Schaefer comes in here. The scenario is almost like a gunfighter. You know, he's not supposed to be here. I don't think these guys want him here. Scott Stevens knows he is going to have the race of his life on his hand right now to get past that Barefoot truck. These guys don't compete against each other that often. Stevens jumped him on the light, Gary. Oh, he got a good cut. Oh, look, look at the air. Fred Schaefer way up in the oh. air. Oh, problem for Scott Stevens. He is upside down. That truck looks like it's really been hurt. We'll watch to see for Scott if Scott can climb out as the crew runs over there, the safety crew, his crew. They look in the cage. Look at the destruction to that Chevrolet. They're peeling the fiberglass away now. We can only wait. Well, Scott is out of the truck. Gary, his crew chief, uh, Tracy Smart, is an EMT. He's with him right now. Larry Hall from Blower Drive Service. The right people are there, but meanwhile, Barefoot's trying to work his way back. The race of the next round gets ready, but the question at hand, how bad does Scott Stevens get hurt on this? And how bad does Scott tear up the truck? Obviously, the truck is not our concern when a driver may be injured, but it looks like he hit that rough spot over there in that left lane. The high that side. turned yeah. him sideways. It's right. so like hooking a rut in a sprint car. You've used that before. It's exactly what happened. This camera angle should show you real good. Look at the air of the hang time Schaefer had on the left of your screen. Now he pulls back on Stevens. Stevens, bad Right there, yeah, he yeah. catches that rut and rolls him on over. A lot of damage. Well, Gary, that run tore up two good monster trucks. Scott Stevens seems to be the worst for wear. Schaefer's going to be back in the next round. They right the Stevens truck. The crew chief's looking at it. I wonder what's going through his mind right now, Gary Lee. Check it out. Still taking care of the sponsor. We'll check on Scott as we return to Bloomsburg. And there is the damage to the creative fiberglass body on King Crunch. The driver is okay. He is with Army Armstrong. Scott, first of all, you okay? Yeah, you know, I just... It's pretty hard tumble, you know, we've done it before, but boy, it's, you, you never never get used to them, and that one, it, it just lasted so long, and, you know, it's pretty good hurt. Do you have any idea what caused the flip? Everybody, you know, I'm not, not going to put any thoughts in your mind. What do you think caused it? I have no idea. I thought it was a, a really a, a good run. The truck got a little little crooked, but no more crooked than it was probably done a hundred times before. It Just when it landed, uh, you know, I thought it was a pretty decent race. You know, I, I thought Fred had a little lead on me, but, you know, I didn't, and then all of a sudden it was... Katie bar the door, everything from, uh, all I could see was dirt, and uh, I, I couldn't tell from one end to the other, and all I was reaching was for kill switches. Well, I tell you, you did a real good job. Your crew's over here waiting. They're anxious to get back to you. Thanks for stopping by and then telling us you're okay. Sorry about the bad luck. All right, no problem. Thank you, Army.
Now the two line up, the rookie and the old-timer, barefoot and monster patrol. Nobody in their right mind would dare not sit still and watch this race, because this is what monster truck racing is all about. Can the rookie take out the world champion? On the start, it is monster patrol with the whole shot. Barefoot fights. He can't do it. He can't do it. An incredible season for monster patrol. He just defeated the world champion. The truck designed by Jack Wilman Sr., the driver of the world mud racing champion, had just taken out the world monster racing champion. And when this guy comes back for the 1994 season, look out, Fred Schaefer, Paul's on your tail. The barefoot Dodge had a good run. You can't take that away from him. But this time, Dodge fell to the Chevy Monster Patrol. Fred Schaefer won a world championship here today, but he did not win this race. That goes to Paul Schaefer, who's standing by with Jim Davidson. Paul Schaefer, excuse me, but I thought you were a rookie. I am a rookie, but I'm learning quick. What are you doing putting away Fred Schaefer in the barefoot? Well, I knew I had to put it all the way to the floor and hope for the best. And I, I put it to the wood, and, and I come out on top. Leaving Pontiac as the winner has got to make you feel good. Oh, that's the best day of my life to win this, because I wanted to beat Fred and the rest of them, and I proved to it that I, I can beat them. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. This is Gary Lee and Army Armstrong as we take a look at Jack Wilman Sr. in Taurus. He goes against Snakebite. Gary, I walked over and looked at the bottom of this truck. I looked at the transmission. That, I would not set in that truck right now there's about a quarter of an inch crack all the way around it is literally just held together by nylon straps jack wilman's right foot is about two inches from something that could explode and hurt him bad but it's final time and it's time to go to the line yeah but sometimes you have to think about your own safety and say hey it's time to walk away and forfeit this championship and not take the chance of injury. But Wilman is strapped on board Torres. He's alongside Colt Cobra in Snakebite. This is for the championship in Canfield, Ohio. They stage. Boy, the drama is thick. You can see a bomb here. So far, so good. Oh, Jack's going to take it. Oh, and he's almost over on his nose. He almost went on over. The transmission holds for that final run, and he takes the championship here in Canfield. Well, I tell you what, that is putting a lot of trust in some nylon straps. A lot of strength in the transmission, and you're right, a lot of faith in those nylon straps. They hold, and he wins it. But look at this. He almost noses over. Yeah, he almost high-sided, but almost don't count, except in hang grenades and horseshoes. So monster trucks, he just plain old won it, Gary. Colt Cobra on your right, Jack Wilman Sr. on your left, and right here, watch how Jack nose dives over the second set of cars, bounces back upright, he takes the victory, he's the champion here in Canfield, Ohio. We've been watching Jack today, watch how he climbs out of this truck, down through the bottom of the cab, and walks around the front, of the, doesn't go through the window like everybody else does, but he wants to check out the damage under this truck, and Army, let's go down track side to you. Trap. Been like that last two runs. Boy, you talk about an instinct scenario. He just pointed out to me the only thing holding that were two straps like bungee type straps. Congratulations on the win, but I think Lady Luck was in your crew today. Oh, definitely. Lady Luck was there, for sure. Strong run. You ran hard all day long. You knew you had problems, but you still stayed after it. That's what this sport's coming to. There's no rollover. You got to go 100% all the way. That's right. These guys out here won't let you lay down. Well, I tell you, congratulations. We enjoy watching you win this one. Thank you very much, John. So now we have Dan Runty, the Power Wheels Bigfoot, in the Ford against the Carolina Crusher Chevrolet of Gary Porter. There is the grill of Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. So the near lane, the fast lane right now, belongs to Dan Runty. Every now and then, Porter talk about Neil Chance and the torque converters. Well, the torque converter is an 8-inch piece of metal that takes all the horsepower, 1,500 horsepower, and makes, actually, the horsepower goes through the torque converter to make these big 10,000-pound trucks move. The Bigfoot team, they rely on the TCI torque converter, so there's different brands of torque converters to get the horsepower to the ground, just like there's different brands of vehicles. There's two races ago, remember, Porter knocked out Runty in the semis. Let's watch this time. Oh, not 
not this it. time. Runs, they look like what? A couple of feet? A 496. So Fred Schaefer will have lane choice with his 491. So it's a dodge against Ford in the finals as the Chevrolet Carolina Crusher heads back to the hauler. As One more look. The replay comes on the screen, I'll bet. A week of your paycheck that Fred Schaefer's going to go on his right lane. It's the quickest. All right, let's talk to Dan Runte. Well, we're waiting for Dan Runte to come out of the vehicle to do an interview, winter interview for him and setting him up for the finals. We look immediately underneath his transfer case and notice yes, they are making a gear change. Real quick, I'm going to grab you. Uh, gear change looks like it's in the work. Yeah, we're going to have to, Army, get some tire speed. We're going to get moved over that left lane. It's a little rougher lane. It's been spinning a lot more on the line. We're figuring we can gear up, take away, to, take away from the motor a little bit. And, and slow this tire spin down and see what happens in the finals. Incredible how much strategy, mechanical know-how can go into a different lane. As we take a look at that replay again, the near lane victory, but in the final round, he will be in the far lane, so they are making the adjustments right now on that truck. And in the meantime, let's go talk to Gary Porter. Gary, nothing to be ashamed of. All these Chevrolet people all over the country are pulling like crazy for you. You know, I think you're doing an awfully good job. Yeah, thank you, Army. You know, out here running with Bigfoot, you know, and all the, you know, uh, big corporate sponsorship guys. I mean, yeah, I would like to win, but I can't complain. You know, I'll just have to take it, you know, like it came today. And, uh, you know, we'll be back another day stronger, I hope. Finals coming up as the work continues on the Bigfoot Ford. Remember, they're changing the gears in that thing to rob some horsepower from the engine for the championship. Discuss reaction time with this guy, Dennis Anderson, Grave Digger, out of North Carolina. Probably one of the most recognized monster trucks of the entire world. This guy always, always lives it on the razor's edge. Should be a good fight right here. The Grave Digger against Hulk Hogan. Sky Hartley against Dennis Anderson. This should be a good matchup here. Experience on the far side with Dennis Anderson against the raw talent and the big heavy foot of Sky Hartley. Good picture of Sky right there as he gets set to roll into the staging beams. It is Hollywood Hogan and Sky Hartley, Dennis Anderson, and the Grave Digger. Great run going for goodness he's up and over sky hartley does on endo right there and still clocks up 520 but the hollywood hulk hogan shredding some parts on the beach well the run the run started off great it just felt fine i hit the second set of cars and all of a sudden it just didn't have any power i don't know if i used all the motor i had and couldn't pull out of it and it just seemed like the motor just shut right off let's take a look at this in replay right now takes the first set really really well under control now here's where the problem comes as he starts to nose over a little bit and no matter how much horsepower you have it may have been impossible to be able to drive underneath that once again kind of nosed it over that's what flipped it you see the drive line the shock mounts coming back out different angle right here see under control into no man's land then he starts to nose back over and once you start bouncing around those front tires it's awful tough to correct Schaefer. I've been out in front a lot of times. My truck's wheels standing. We had a lot of trouble. We got so much power with this new Dodge Ram. Uh, we've been working on the clutch, the shocks. I mean, everything, trying to keep the front end down. Uh, power's not the problem. It's keeping the front end down and going down the track. I, I think we're on it this weekend. We shall find out as Fred Schaefer in the Dodge Barefoot staging against the Ford Stinger. Standing on the sidelines in the white shirts, Dan Runty. Looking at this final a lot different than the ones in the past. Dodge against Ford. They're staged here in Canfield. Both drivers in the lane they want to be in, Gary. Neither one of them trying to get into the lights real quick. Running alcohol for fuel, trying to build a little heat to make some horsepower. But remember, Schaefer said horsepower is not the problem. the first half, but 
Meager got him at the end. The way the chassis were set up, Schaefer went nose up over the finish line. Meager dove at the finish line. You can see it right here. It's all in the chassis of the trucks. So the once Dodge, again, the nose up hurt Fred Schaefer. Exactly. The Dodge, by virtue of being nose up, actually killed the forward motion. Now see the forward, it'll dive nose down right towards the finish line. And Eric Meager wins by that much. Here in Canfield as a happy Bigfoot crew. There's Dan Runty uh, over there with the driving suit on and the white T-shirt. Out of competition after the uh, grinding accident. As we take a look now at the point standings, Runty still with the big lead, but Meager is starting to close in. He wins here this afternoon. Here's Eric. Great job. Thanks, Kenny. How about it, pal? Great win. Oh, love it, love it. Being, being first is never nothing like being second. We were second too long. Our day was coming, today's our day. WCW, DuPont Automotive Finishes, Mac Tools, Firestone, Ford, everybody. They're all happy and so are we. I'm trying to grab the microphone from you, Army. Andy Brass, Bigfoot 8. Of course, he is based in St. Louis, Missouri. Only about a four or five hour drive from here in Indianapolis. And he'll go up against Eldon Depew of Granite City, Illinois, in Taurus. Jack Wellman, the owner of this truck, told Eldon, just go drive your race. Get time in the seat. These trucks ran against each other in the first round. The brake rule brings Taurus back in this thing. I wonder what's going through his mind right now. I don't think he's going to let Andy intimidate him at all. Oh, boy. But Andy got left. the whole shot. Oh, Whoa. look how close it was, though. Andy had the whole shot, but Eldon stuck his foot to the floorboard and almost caught him. Eldon Andy is, may have won it, though. That was amazing. This kid, you could see him on every run developing the car. He's left at the light. Okay, now from here on out, it's got to be horsepower. The truck settles, all four wheels bite. He launches it. I bet this kid for a hobby likes to tap dance in a minefield. That's the kind of mindset he has. All right, who won it? I don't know. We're still waiting. That was a photo finish. I'm not sure that... Uh, They're going into technical trainer to take it out, Gary. Well, we rely on the videotape, but they'll be looking at what we just saw, and we can't tell. There's Andy Brass. Looking again. One up, one down. Like two fighter pilots. One's trying to go up, the other one's trying to go down. Look at that. Nose up, nose down. Well, the officials are now saying that it was Bigfoot that won by what the right front tire perhaps they may say that but that's not what i see but what i see doesn't count i guess so andy brass wins it but i think we'll see this young man back in competition because the fast loser of this round will return let's talk to andy brass andy the word we're getting the wind came in about an inch long that is it was a close when i went in the trailer because uh, we have had several close calls out here and i'm thinking sometimes we're getting a short end of the stick so i want to make sure i went in and watched the video jack's going in now to watch it from my watch uh, i think if we'd shave the tires much more we would have lost see you in the next round all right thank you the finals bigfoot and taurus we've been here twice already the big difference is i guarantee if taurus can leave with bigfoot he can beat him on the other end that's going to be the trick. If that kid can stay cool and come out of the gate with brass, he did it. He did it. He wins it. He has it by a Fender Army. You called it. You're absolutely right on. He stayed with him. Brass may have had a slight hole shot right there, but otherwise the kid, Eldon Depew, stays with Andy Brass. And Taurus, the Chevrolet, knocks off the Ford Bigfoot. Boy, that is amazing. The replay shows one goes over nose up, the other one goes over nose down both times. And the youngster from Granite City, Illinois, not far from St. Louis, takes the victory. He's the winner here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Let's talk to Eldon Depew, the champion this afternoon. Eldon, third time was charm for you, but really, I got to give you a lot of credit. To be a new driver, you're awfully good at this. Uh, you know, I've been been around them since they started, you know, Jack's been doing this for 12 years and I've been right there with them and, you know, I've I learned from the best, Jack Wilman, and that's where I give all the credit to. I'll tell you what, he's got an awful lot to be proud of. You got a lot of credit coming your way too, congratulations to you. Well, thank you, Army. And that will wrap it up from the Indiana State Fairgrounds here in Indianapolis. Our congratulations to Eldon Depew. The fans show their appreciation. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Join us next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now, here's news about an exciting new home video from Diamond P Sports.
Well, it's been easy so far for Scott Stevens and the King Crunch. He had a bye run, but this time he's going again. Chuck Hawkins and the Excalibur. He had that upset victory over the equalizer in round number one. Here they go. Scott Stevens has had an opportunity to watch everybody run. He took this course by himself on a bye run in round number one, and he's falling behind to the Predator right now in his first real competition in Louisville. Excalibur going a little wild. He breaks it out. This guy gets great control. Scott Stevens, though, picks up a lot of yardage as Excalibur bobbles over the cars. It's going to be flat out side by side as we come down to the finish. And the win goes to Excalibur. The young man, Chuck Hawkins, comes in here to Louisville and goes boom, boom, and knocks out two of the big boys. And the Auto Value King Crunch blows a tire off the last set of cars. And that ends round two. How about that second round? How about this truck, the Excalibur? You know that this truck turned in the fastest time of the night so far, but uh, it's leaving on the back end of a hook. Will the Excalibur be able to come back for the round of four? Stay tuned. Monster Truck Challenge continues on ESPN in just a moment. Tom Meats has been very quick off the starting line. Dennis has had some problems, as we saw in the semifinal round, but he's been able to score some wins. So the guy out of Paxton, Illinois, right now has got his work cut out for him, but Dennis also has got his work cut out for him as well. He's got to be a little bit relaxed on the starting line, can't hurry, but you've got to have all your ducks in a row here as they're marching towards their share of the $40,000 purse here at Thunder on the Beach 3. Monster trucks getting staged right now. They're 10,000 pound vehicles running on alcohol, supercharged engines. They're on it. Another close side by side matchup. And from our angle, it looks like a pick em. Almost a photo finish right there. We're going to have to give the advantage, however, to Mr. Tom Meats, who got at the starting line and was able to run the quickest and straightest run. The Monster Patrol takes home the crown of thunder on the beach three. Yeah, it's a real rough track. You know, the sand out here can be really hard on your motor. And, you know, all the trucks are pretty much on the same level plateau and it's a lot tougher than it used to be. There ain't no gimmies out here. You know, it turned out really well for us. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. If that truck's not broken, yeah. You know, it's really amazing. If the jamborees, everybody comes loaded for bear, and Porter may not get a shot at this one. Let's find out. No love lost. As a matter of fact, I'll be up front. These guys just don't like each other. One in a dodge, one in a four. Let's just watch this one. It'll be a street fight. Brass. Oh, you call it. No, I can't. That's a photo finish. We'll wait for the officials. We'll ask George Carpenter who won that one. Wow. The fans don't know. They're waiting as well. There's a look at uh, Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Let's look again. Both trucks run a soft suspension. Notice how they both settled. Now they can really make the horsepower work for them and literally fly to the finish. And right there, you can see by that margin, Andy Brass takes the victory. He's with Army. Right now, Gary, we got Andy Brass. Andy keeps going quicker and quicker, but something unique here. Left lane. You sat and studied it. You figured something out that everybody else couldn't. What was it? Uh, I can't really say really about the lane. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference. I think it's just a lot of the guys' minds. You know, we knew Fred that if he got to come down to us and him, he was going to pick the right lane. We was going to have to run the left. We tried. We run left in qualifying. We didn't do bad, so we figured we just got to pull a hard run on left lane. Just have to stand in it and not let out of it. But the okay, back to our matchup now between the Dodge Express, Ken Deppy, and Bigfoot with Gene Patterson. And the right to meet Andy Brass for the championship. Well, if both drivers working that start line to perfection. You're trying to psych the other guy. They won't admit it, but they are trying to psych the other guy out. They want the other guy to stage first so he goes up on his 
brake and gets more heat in his engine, the, the transmission or whatever. Green light pops. Oh, looks like the Dodge Express got the whole shot back. Whoa, whoa. They get together, and that would disqualify the Dodge Express because he was over in Gene Patterson's shutdown lane. Yeah, uh, both drivers, both drive the kill switches have been activated. Okay, the automatic kill switches, both trucks sitting dead in the water on the end of the track. Uh, safety crew coming in, replay's gonna come up on the screen, but like you say, Deppy, now both guys had it on kill. Let's be up front with everybody. But Deppy's out of shape right there across that center line marked by those cones. He makes light contact, but that's still enough to be disqualified. Yeah, but Gary, light contact in this sport is uh, kind of like being a little bit pregnant. There's no such thing. When, when you hit these guys, you hit a ton. It is real contact. You don't believe me? Just look at it one more time. They're lucky they kissed tires and they didn't get on top of each other, Gary, like sprint cars Yeah, because one do. car would have been, or in this case, a truck would have been upside down. Quick. Well, here's a look at the uh, crash cam, and there's the contact as we go trackside to visit with Ken Deppy. Tell you, nothing to be ashamed of. It was, from this end, it was spooky. What about your seat? Oh, it got just a little bit loose just as I hit the ramp there, and I could feel myself drifting a little bit on it, and once you're up in the air, there's no real control by the driver anymore. And I knew I was going to get up against him. I'm not sure who was over, you know, the farthest. I'm just assuming I was. Okay, yeah, that rule just came down that they're disqualifying you. He gets the win because when you landed, you landed at his lane. And are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I, I was, like I say, when I was flying through the air, I could see that I was drifting off to the right, and I was afraid I was going to do that. Coming up, the two Dodgers have been knocked out. They've been DQ'd. It's an all-Ford final. Stay with us. Elton Depew in Taurus survives first-round competition. He puts his neck brace on there out of Granite City, Illinois, the nephew of the truck owner, Jack Wilman Sr., and here is Nick Rossi in the outlaw. Yo, during the interview a minute ago, I noticed Rossi is very relaxed. He's the owner of the truck. He's actually having fun here, and he's not afraid of this kid. Look at here. Rossi's going after him. And Rossi, well, wait a minute, that's yeah. almost a dead heat. Let's wait for the official word on that one. Nick Rossi can still drive a monster truck. He just proved it right there. He drilled this kid on the line. He drilled him on the line, but Eldon Depew comes back right here over that second set of cars. Look how close it is. You got to call it. I can't. I can't call it. Let's wait for the official word. Right there it is. Nick Rossi, the outlaw, takes the victory. He's with Army. Well, Nick Rossi and Bob Breen are showing us old monster truck drivers can still be good monster truck drivers. You look like a kid out there. I'm ready. I'm, I'm psyched. I'm just ready to go. You're having fun today, aren't you? I'm having a blast. Well, we'll see you in the next round. Good luck to you. I'll be there. It's going to be a good weekend for the Fords because they're going to be right there. There's one of them, Wildfoot with Andy Brass, and there is the front of a... Well, a two-time fast loser, but right here he is, the semis. That is a Bigfoot with Gene Patterson. This is called a deja vu round. We've seen <laughs> this one before, two, but... Two yeah. deja vus today. But that you don't race behind you. You race in front of you. Those things behind us just got him to this point. He can still, Gene Patterson, when I say he can still be a player, and, you know, maybe he's learned something these previous two rounds. We well, have seen how close these two rounds have been. Now, can Wildfoot beat Bigfoot three times in one afternoon? Would that be called a hat trick in this sport, Gary Lee? That's the trifecta. I don't know that Bigfoot has ever been beaten three times. Let's see a third time's that. charm. I believe it is. I think I Foot know. got him. I don't know. It's mighty close. I, I think, think you're right. Whoa, oh, hang whoa. on there. Gene almost drove around to the paddock right there. Uh, we don't have a paddock in this sport. It's called a driveway. Brass goes a 518. That rolls him over. But let's see. Bingo! Yes. All Gene right. Patterson has taken out Wildfoot. Let's look one more time. Third time charm in Canfield for the big, bad blue truck. Patterson kept coming back as the fast loser round one, round two, and he takes out Wildfoot. Let's look again. Remember the old rock and roll song, Devil with the Blue Dress on? Well, she's dancing right now. <laughs> and she'll be dancing in, in the, the final here right. at Canfield as Gene Patterson knocks out Andy Braz. So and scares the security guard. Now our remote truck parked yeah. right behind that fence there. That was very close. Now we'll go down and talk to Gene Patterson as he climbs out. Well, I tell you what, uh, you just seem to be on a good roll today. Andy, you know, he 
Bumped you twice, but you didn't let it bother you. You just kind of ran your race, and you're going to the final. That's right, Army. You know, the Ford Bigfoot team, we're working real hard this weekend. You know, both these trucks are running real good. Uh, we got another Ford, it seems like, down in the bottom part of the bracket. That'd be that snake bite truck. You know, these Fords are working good here this weekend. We're real tickled to death. Wise Coat Pistons right here in Ohio. Got a little bit extra boost in the motor on it. You know, we're just doing fine. We're really, we're really tickled. Three times a charm, you know. Indeed, third time's a charm. Gene Patterson, the Ford Bigfoot in the finals against the Ford Snake Bite and Rick Rattler all coming your way from Canfield. Stay with us. Yeah, but the rest of the story is one of the Fords keeps coming back. That's the Bigfoot Ford through that quick loser bracket. Sanctioned body, good move. It keeps them racing hard. Well, you'll recall after his second round run, Ken Deffy was talking about some suspension problems on the Dodge Barefoot. Army has this follow-up. Barefoot was talking about problems they have with their limiter cable, so I thought I'd show you what it is and what it's for. It's this cable right here. And what it does, it keeps the shock absorber from coming apart. The shock absorber is designed to stretch out. But this cable, once the shock absorber goes to maximum length, it actually stops it from going any further and keeps the shock together. Now, this particular vehicle has two shocks. Each shock's $1,500. So if this cable were to snap or malfunction and the front end stretch all the way out, you're going to lose $3,000 worth of shock absorbers instantly. Cheap cable that does a rather expensive job. All right, we are ready now for side-by-side -side action. The semis, far lane, barefoot, the Dodge, near lane, the Ford, snake bite, Rattler against Deppy. New kid on the block in the far lane. New kid on the block this lane. The future of the sport, that's what we're looking at. Boy, Will's up start for snake bite. Deppy's trying to muscle him on the other end. Oh, which was it? Almost a dead heat. Who won that one, Army? Man, I don't have any idea. Well, let's check the times. Deppy's a 526. 525. You can't get any closer than that. Oh, man, oh, man. By the eyelash. That's what I like. The, the sports keeps going and growing. Here's two new drivers, OK? driving good equipment. Their mentors are back building better equipment. Yeah, and let's talk to what has to be a happy Rick Rattler. Boy, you just took one of the heavy hitters out of this game. Yeah, we knocked the Dodge out with the Ford Snake Bite. You know, we bit him pretty tough, and I don't think, you know, this weekend's gonna be a good weekend for the Dodges, but all in all, we're out to see who wins in the finals. Believe me, Andy Brass had him cover from the starting line, Gary. Now, that was first round. Now we're rolling over to the next round. Out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, Kirk Dabney drives the nightmare. He was victorious over the executioner in round one, and so he pulls alongside Wild. Dabney's a guy that I call a kamikaze pilot. Man, he will pull a trigger on you in a heartbeat. Look at that. He's pushing that new Wild. Oh, there goes He's Dabney upside over. down. He actually rolls it on over, doesn't make it all the way over. He was in trouble midway through this run. And did not lift. He knew he was in trouble, but he was still going after the juggler vein. Well, that GTS fiberglass body really takes a beat. And look at this. Here comes Kirk. He's all right. Kirk Daphne is climbing out. A lot of fiberglass damage, but perhaps the truck not damaged as much as it may appear from the grandstand. No, the chassis held up. You know, that's why they build these things by the rule book. All right. Breathe a sigh of relief, Gary. He's going to come out of this thing okay. And the fans are happy to see him climb away. And I think you're down in a position now where perhaps you can get a word with Kirk Daphne. Well, Gary, real quick. Things are kind of acting down here on the other end. First of all, are you okay? Yeah, Army, I'm fine. What caused the truck to bounce like it? Well, it looks like uh, front steering linkage let go on the impact after the second jump. Um, it's a little early to tell, but that's what the best guess is right now. Okay, well, I understand the EMTs want to get uh, get a look at you, get over there. Thanks a lot for coming over. Man, we're sorry about the bad luck. Hey, we'll be back, guys. Thank you very much. We will catch our breath, clear the track, and come back with more from Lime, Ohio. Yeah. Barefoot. One's gonna come out, the champion, at Lebanon Valley Raceway. A thumbs up and we're ready to go. Taurus and Barefoot evenly matched. Going to the straightaway now. Barefoot has to play catch up and he does it! Barefoot, what a come from behind victory! One tenth of a second, the margin of victory for Barefoot. Not even with a truck length lead going into the straightaway could Taurus defeat anybody when he's stuck in that right-hand lane. Barefoot wins it, and Taurus, well, a tough break for him. He'll have to wait to win another day. Coming up next, the equalizer with David Morris out of Tennessee, and he pulls alongside Wildfoot. 
And Andy Brass. Andy Brass is tickled to death to be driving this truck. There's not a lot of pressure on him. He's already proven he's one of the premier drivers in the sport. He's going up against this kid out of Tennessee. Been around a long time. But Brass likes the idea of you being involved in a research and development truck. He likes to experiment. He likes to try something new. And believe me, you can just tell by looking at this truck, the way the suspension sits, it's different from the get-go just sitting on the start line. Look at oh, that, look at that wheel stand. Whoa! Oh, he hit that second ramp with the rear tires. That's not the configuration you want to go over that jump. Oh! Wow! Man, I'll tell you what, that people. was driving skill that yeah. brought that truck back. Now watch. Watch the wheel stand in no man's land and watch him hit that second ramp with the rear end. On the throttle, see, he's making so much power, he just pulls a wheelie all the way over. That was neat, Gary Lee. I don't know how neat that was from the cockpit. Here's Andy. Andy Brass, uh, it's final time, but in the, in the semifinals, you took a run. I've seen a lot. I've never seen anything like that. What went through your mind on that run? Well, the only thing I could think of right there when she pulled the wheels, I was like, well, if I let out of it, you know, I know Equalizer was going to run a good time. I had to more or less stay in it. And I knew if we run her up the hill, she was probably going to nose over after the hill. And we just, when, when she started to come down, we just trying to stay back in it and keep the front wheels pulling and hopefully she pulled us back down on the ground. And that's what it did. A veteran. He was in USA 1. Now he's campaigning a truck called the Executioner. And here in round one, he takes on Kirk Dabney. Pushes Dabney right to the limit. Dabney's experience shoulder on the starting line, but Hall on the other end of the track Became a real big player here. He literally pushed Dabney three for Dabney to go into that next round. Hall will be around before. Get ready now for round two competition. We look under the vehicle, which is Paul Schaefer in the Monster Patrol. Now, unfortunately, Paul does not have lane choice in this event. He'll be in the right lane, the lane nearest the camera. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to bother Paul. He and his crew have been working hard all year long, trying to get dialed in. They're getting closer and closer. The horsepower is there. The horsepower for the Portage, Indiana auto salvage uh, businessman is an Aries engine. No problem with horsepower. He just got to get the chassis squared away. Speaking of horsepower, the Power Wheels team, they've hooked up with uh, Alan Root to make Buku horsepower for those Ford engines. It's the supercharged version of the 460 cubic inch engine, Gary. Well, Dan Runty certainly has the package going his way. The package meaning horsepower, the suspension works. He's tough to beat. Uh, plus, he's got a cool driver suit and a no-fear decal on his helmet. Well, yeah, but he has to put the pedal down and have it all hooked up, though, when he goes racing. And so far, this has been his season. Yeah, still got a cool driver suit. Well, he does it that. We're both kind of jealous of his driver suit. Chevrolet versus Ford. Let's see what's going to happen. Schaefer, near lane, Chevrolet, nothing to lose. He's experimenting, trying to get the horsepower to the ground. We know the Ford can do it. They leave together. Gary, you take the call. That's yeah, going to be Ford at the far side. Bigfoot power wheels of Dan Runte. So he will advance. Dan had a time of 5.04. There's a time for Runte in the power wheels Bigfoot. He will advance and maybe uh, pad his points cushion just a bit of 5.17. Respectable run for Paul Schaefer. There's your 10th I was talking about, the Ford's leapfrog. You catch them, they'll jump out a 10th on you. You catch them, they'll jump out again. Let's see what's going to happen. Runte at the finish line, a little bit lollygaggle landing there, but it works. Lollygagging? There's a board for your vocabulary. Let's go back trackside, Army. What's causing the truck to yaw like that on the other end? That last jump is throwing you completely sideways, it looks like to me. Army, it's pretty much the way we got Trailmaster shocks valve. They're set, the truck's setting down in between the cars. That's what we're looking for. We're really not looking for the finish line. As long as the truck's landing and we can control it, that's after the fact. And that really doesn't make a big difference. Like I said, if, if the truck sits down in between the two sets of cars and hooks up the whole distance, that's what makes your times faster. Yeah, but that's when you hold your breath down there when you're not quite... Well, Dodge is going to win this thing, that's for sure. There is Rampage with the broken windshield. Ken Deppi, the far lane, the near lane. Fred Schaefer in the barefoot Dodge. Even though Schaefer owns both of them, I guarantee you Deppi's going to run him hard. Remember, this is his backyard. Disqualified, he was out of bounds. Deppy wins it. However, Schaefer does move to second place in the point standings, but the victory goes to Ken Deppy. Well, Ken Deppy, it, it was just a, a great race. I tell you what, a hard race. Fred disqualified, but you ran him hard. You know, Army, uh, Fred's always been running faster times than I have all year. Today uh, was one of the exceptions. I actually put down a faster time than Fred did today, uh, which really kind of surprised me. 
Uh, I was really happy about that. Really happy that we both made it in the final. You know, two dodges in the final. Can't get much better than that. Well, here is what happened. Watch Fred Schaefer coming right at you. He veers off to your right. His left goes out of bounds. He's DQ'd. Well, we hope you've enjoyed today's monster truck racing from Springfield, Missouri. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports. Basic operation, and folks, I'm going to tell you, it's not going to happen. These two guys are racers. Bob Chandler's given both of them the green light. If nothing else, they want bragging rights to go back to St. Louis with. You're going to see a good race here. Of course, Ronte wants back in victory lane. As they're both staged now for the launch. Ronte's got it on kill. Oh, good. He's in trouble. Battle, but Ruddy hangs on. No, he doesn't. He's upside down. Dan Ruddy in the shutdown area. Got upside down. Of course, the uh, cloud of dust now obscuring our view. Now we start to see the uh, inverted truck as the crew members are running over to Dan Runty. He got in trouble in, in the shutdown area. At right lane, Gary Canfield caught him. He got over the lip. Here the emergency crews heading that way. And there's the damage to the fiberglass, uh, the doghouse, as the crew now talking inside the uh, cockpit. The helmet is off. He is okay, but obviously he is stunned. He obviously is stunned. You can hear the crowd reaction in the background. What a violent rollover for Dan Runty. A terrible weekend here in Canfield. Let's go trackside to Army. Well, Gary, as you can see, they're immediately taking him over to uh, the medical staff. Herb Richards, his mentor, is on his left side. The medical staff's with him right now. So the fire department's right here to hose everything down. The uh, safety equipment work. Dan's all right. I'm going to try to get a word with him real quick. Dan? Can I speak to you real quick before you get to the medical guys? Just a second. Do you have any idea what caused it to move like that? It just I hit the second ramp or hit the second ramp trying to pull it back in, you know, run a clean race. The truck was out of shape over the first ramp. Had to stay in it knowing it was Eric, and when it went up in the air, it just kicked it sideways. And we we're basically done when it come down, just tried to drive back under it, come off the edge there, and it hurt. Okay, let me get you in here with these guys. Thanks a lot, fellas. Good luck to you, Dan. Thank you. Gary, the replay comes up. Did you hear the last thing you said to Eric Meagher? He said, concentrate on the next race. Always thinking about the next one. Watch the right rear tire here. What happens with only four pounds of air pressure? It digs in when he lands, see, and it's crossed up. Now he gets on the throttle, trying to pull it back around, being a four-wheel drive, knowing if any corner is going, if any corner touches, he can pull it back. It was too late. He hit that infamous drop-off at Canfield and went over the wall. Safety equipment, though, doing uh, the job required. The roll cage, the harness, the helmet, the seat belt. So the driver is okay. We'll come back with more from Canfield. Welcome back to Canfield, Ohio. This was just moments ago as they clean up uh, the aftermath of the wreck involving Dan Runty and Bigfoot. One of cosmetic damage to that truck. Yeah, the roll cage uh, kept its integrity. The driver's standing right there. All the safety equipment, the Simpson helmet, and everything did exactly what they were supposed to do. RJS and Simpson make good safety equipment. We're glad for that. He was at the fast qualifier, and there is a look at barefoot Fred Schaefer at a pontoon beach, Illinois, and he'll stage against his Dodge teammate, the Rampage, Todd Frawley. you got to remember now, the right lane seems to have a kiss of luck on it, for lack of a better term. Meager one out of that lane over Runty. Look where Fred Schaefer goes. He's going right back into that lane. When you go into the final, the winner of this race, I'm, I'm sure that Meager will want to go into that right lane. He's made it to the final. The question is, who's going to have the right to go into the lane? Now, the 501, yeah, 501 is not the number Meager was looking for, and that's what he's referring to. Well, Barefoot qualified at a 4.970. He's got a 4.6 earlier. Gary, I just checked my stats. Nobody has won out of the left lane all day long today. Every win has come out of the right lane, I believe. And that statistic, Army, will continue as Fred takes the victory. He has the trouble in the shutdown. And look at that. Up ties his best ever at 464. That's the mirror image to the quickest runner in the sport. Now, Fred Schaefer and the Dodge team are building to a crescendo. They're going to the finals, and they're going in fast. The replay comes. Fred just had this race all the way through. Look at that. The truck settles down. A 464. The handwriting's on the wall, and the four team knows it.
Well, once again, Fred Schaefer will have lane choice because he has the faster run between Stinger and Barefoot. And he has to be ecstatic with that. Let's go trackside and talk to Fred. Fred, a 464, you say you got more left in this one. Army, uh, all the awards and achievements this new Dodge Ram has gotten, the short time it's been out, we're going to add one more to it. The fastest time in monster truck history, 464. We just backed it up. Stage Thunder on the beach, three. As they match up, should be good. The winners advance on. The losers get to play on the beach. First round, Thunder on the beach. They're all yanking for $40,000 in that purse. And again, a good first round matchup here. David Morris in the equalizer on a Springfield, Tennessee. A good looking truck. Plenty of speed here with good qualifying effort against Eric Tack driving a big foot forward. Bob and Marilyn Chandler out of St. Louis, Missouri. Again, Bigfoot, a tough round in qualifying there. He had an 814, whereas the equalizer had a pretty good run in a 720. Should be a good first round matchup. Let's see who the winner is here. Once the flag goes, they're on their own. Horsepower on the line as we get set for the first pairing in round number one. Really finding his way through the sand there. Looked like equalizer at the very end. Bigfoot may have got him on the fly. Your winner is Eric Tack and Bigfoot. Had to catch up some ground against equalizer. He moves on to the next round. A good victory for Eric Tack in the Bigfoot board. Next, Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher and Tom Means in the Monster Patrol. So we've got a whole lot of horsepower up against a whole lot of experience. Carolina Crusher in the right lane. This lane has caused some problems for a number of competitors because the water's starting to pool up there a little bit. But I'll tell you one thing, Gary Porter's been at this game long enough. He knows how to get through some of those rough and tough spots. Should be a good final with Tom Meat staging up right now and Gary Porter set to bring the crusher to the line. Should be an awfully great final. What a way to end a pretty good weekend here in Wildwood, New Jersey with the finals of Thunder on the Beach. Great side-by-side -side monster truck race. Gary Porter and Tom Meats just about even as they come over the first set of cars. And then Porter with a little bit more horsepower picks up a victory here. His first trip to Wildwood, New Jersey, and this thunder on the beach. But Gary Porter picks up the win there. And pretty good effort by Tom Meats as well. That former mud racers had a little bit of fun here this weekend as well. So second place, not a bad shot when you're going up against one of the truly tough guys in monster truck racing. Oh, and look at this. Time for a little fun as they both have a, a couple of minutes just to kind of clown around a little bit. You've got 10,000 pounds in front of you and you're done racing. Why not take an opportunity just to kind of go up and see what you can do? Cutting some cookies and let's see what Tom Meats can do. This guy has been all over the United States, hung up on a banner right here, and he's just kind of out a little free-for-all as Gary Porter does some high-flying acrobatics here. So Tom Meats getting set to go back to Illinois and up on a problem. This is going to be as he lays it over on its top, out messing around on the beach. What do you say? What do you say? And we showed him. I mean, it was luck. We all really worked for it here at Wildwood. The truck, we was having problems with it. We found out in qualifying with our timing. We couldn't keep the timing, you know, at the uh, degree we wanted it. But, uh, you know, we checked it just about every round. The lanes were playing a big role in the, who was winning the races today, and sometimes I got stuck in a bad lane, and uh, you know, somehow I was just able to pull it off. Well, they, they don't get any better than that. Uh, you know, with me and Monster Patrol in the finals, you know, luckily I won the race, and then doing the freestyle, I'd have to say he won the freestyle. You know, I mean, you can't have a better finale of a show than what that was. Well, congratulations to Gary Porter on taking the win today, and also congratulations to Dave Sutton and the New Jersey Hot Rod Association for putting on another spectacular event here in Wildwoods, New Jersey. <laughs> Crowd waving to our ESPN cameras here in Raleigh. For this final, it's Digger and Torres. And for the first time tonight, Jackie Wilman and Torres is in the left lane.
Digger's going to have the uh, choice of lanes here. You're probably going to end up on the left, correct? Yeah, I'm going to end up running in the lane, and I haven't run all night, so it's going to be a new experience. And uh, I think I got a little bit better truck than the, those who've been running in that lane, so I'm just going to see if I can get the truck down in the best respect I can. I saw you over there kind of surveying your lane. Uh, did you see anything interesting? No, it's just that first set of cars really wants to throw you up in the air, and I'm just going to try to see what I can do and get over them, and I'll give him a run for his money. Well, good luck to you and Taurus in the finals. Thank you. Appreciate it. Jackie Wilman talking lane choice. Of course, everybody's talking lane choice tonight, including this guy, Dennis Anderson, the grave digger. He was our fastest qualifier, and uh, he does get lane choice here tonight. All right, Dennis Anderson, the digger. Uh, been a successful night going into the finals up against Taurus. Hey, I tell you, Jackie's been laying down some good runs. We had some real close qualifying runs. And uh, I think he finished up second fastest. I was the first fastest. Uh, I do have lane choice over him. He's favoring this right lane. He hadn't run that left lane all night. So maybe I can get the edge on him, throw him in that left lane over there. I'm kind of used to this lane. But uh, all we got to do is keep her cool. Every time it comes down to the finals, he's pretty aggressive, and so am I. And uh, we just got to come over that first pile of cars and get her planted on the ground and go for it. The aggressive opinions of Dennis Anderson, plan them and go. And here he is in his home state of North Carolina. We're set for the final, Taurus and Grave Digger. When we get the green light, it's showtime, and there it goes. Taurus with a big lead, but look, he has trouble on the second set, and Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger wins it. The win in his home state for the first time out in the 92 season of a brand new truck. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. And here's how it was done. Off the line, it was Taurus. Dennis said he was going to plant him and go. Here he does. He passes him in the air. The win goes to Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. From this angle, you can see there's some problems. Not right here, but when he plants him and goes right here. Look, you'll see some sparks. And it looks as though the drive shaft fell out of it. But Dennis was already in the air, already airborne. He gets the win. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger go on to win it here in Raleigh. Jackie Wellman spinning on the line. He did get the hole shot. He comes off bobbles right here. This is very uncharacteristic for Taurus as he just sort of limps across, takes out the finish line pole, and struggles to keep it under control. The next pair, Mike, is really the one that everybody was anticipating anyway. This is Bigfoot going up against Equalizer. There it is, the king of all the monsters for so many years, Bigfoot, the 1997 Ford F-150, 572 cubic inches, 1,400 Bigfoot horsepower. They just put a new motor in that truck Wednesday night. Finished it up buckle it up and hauled it up here and it is going to be big horsepower lots of lots of compression but he has got to go against this truck here equalizer the 97 chevy s10 540 cubic inches 1400 horsepower coming out of the bow tie as well and there's probably not anyone better on a course like we're looking at tonight than david morris he is a master at the obstacle course so the champion from 97 sits right there in equalizer and the man who thought he would be champion at the end of the season trying to claim the title here in 98 driving Bigfoot set to go keep your eye on the right hand side the equalizer truck I think that's the truck that's going to be the big horsepower truck here tonight he's got a great driving technique the truck the rear end's on the long so he can spin it around a lot quicker he got a great start to the equalizer Morris spins it around that's a pretty good turn but here comes Bigfoot just right back on the course is still anyone. Morris swings wide. Now we're going to go for it. It's going to be very. Well, my vantage point didn't tell me who win, but it, I saw Morris get up on three wheels. Well, it lived up to its billing. It was a fantastic fight between Bigfoot and the equalizer. Let's see if we can get the official word from the judges. I think the course is a lot harder than anyone ever anticipated it being. I think that it's just really putting the handful for these drivers. Let's, let's watch David Morris go around this last turn. It gets a little bit wide, swings the truck back, now hammers hard on it, a lot of air under it, and he's been declared the official winner, Ralph. Yeah, and Virginia Giant was given the victory in round uh, the first competition as well between him and Bulldozer. So apparently hitting that pole 
was what cost Bigfoot the victory in the first pair. The first one to the other end of the track moves on to the finals. Equalizer and Taurus, both are crowd favorites, both are Chevy powered. But there are some subtle differences between these two trucks. With Equalizer weighing in at 10,200 pounds and pushing out 1,300 horses. And Taurus, just the bare minimum, 10,000 pounds, 1,200 horses. Both are Chevy powered and both are favorites of the U.S. Hot Rod Association fans. Very, very important as the night progresses that the drivers find a sweet spot on the starting line. As the night progresses, things will dry out down there and a lot of loose dirt will cause you to lose traction. Equalizer gets a good bite on the start and he takes it the whole way. Equalizer has made it to the finals in Tampa a full tenth of a second over Taurus. And the starting line is what caused the problem for Jack Wilman. You can see Taurus was lifted up. Part of the tire bit, the other car didn't, and that caused him about a half second. That's all Equalizer needed for a win. Equalizer, a great start. He found a nice spot. In other words, I'm saying, friends, the left lane seems to be the favorite lane. If I were going to be in the final and Equalizer's going to be in there, I'd hope that I'll make it to that left-hand lane. Torrance raised up. The back wheels are spinning. It cost him a lot of time right there, and he could not catch up. Gary Portis is just have at it. Fred Schaefer is ready. Green light showtime. Side by side, they're off the line. They're full with a slight lead. They're going into the turn. The world champion has to hold on because he has got Gary Portis right on his tail. Candy screams. Well, the technology and suspensions has really enabled these guys to go so fast over these cars. It's the same basic technology used in drag racing with the four-link suspension on the rear. Eric Meager looks on as his teammate Dan Runte stages the Power Wheels Bigfoot. There's the nose of the barefoot Dodge of Fred Schaefer. Schaefer awfully slow going into the starting wheel. Okay, he's coming in now. Both drivers up. Oh, did you see that surge off Whoa. of... Did you see the surge when he came Landed, off that yeah. first jump? They're setting their chassis different. The Dodges are dropping their rear wheels down, making contact quicker than the Fords, and that's putting them on the other end. You think they're not happy? 494. Now watch as the rear settles down after this first jump, and watch the surge right here. Yeah. Look at him kick out, and that's where he wins it. Fred Schaefer takes the victory. And right now, he has to be ecstatic. Let's go down trackside. He's with Army. That had to be a win you're looking for all year long. Yes, it has, Army. And uh, this, 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 here in Indianapolis, uh, that's a big one for me. And it uh, feels good. There we go. Side by side. Who won it? Porter was right there on my doors now. I don't know what the fuck the deal is here. Man, Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, or Dennis Anderson, the Grave Digger. They both want to know who won the race. 
Can we tell from here? I don't know. It's very tough for me to tell. Carolina Crusher, Grave Digger. It looks like a dead heat to me. Look at this. The Grave Digger wins it. 5.40 seconds. And Gary Porter does not think that's right. He's going out to talk to the U.S. Hot Rod officials. I just want to see the replay. A man and digger is running up a kill. I felt like I won, and I just wanted to see, you know, see it for myself. It had to be a close race regardless. Was it Grave Digger or Carolina Crusher? They're right there on the finish line together, and Gary Porter is arguing with the U.S. Hot Rod officials because he thinks he won the race, or at the very least, it was a dead heat, and they should rerun it. But they say, no, no way. They say the Grave Digger won it, and there's nothing they're going to do about it. Well, I guess I have to live with it. They come to the line, Equalizer and Barefoot, Chevy against Dodge, the world champion against the former world champion. Amores would love to have that title back. Wait for the green light, they ramp up. A whole shot for Barefoot. He pops a wheelie in no man's land. A wheelie down the track for Barefoot, and he wins it. An incredible run for the world champion. And David Morris just didn't have a prayer. Dodge took it down the track. Your winner, Barefoot, with a wheelie. Watch this. He powers up, and the front tires never touch the dirt. Till the finish line. That's not racing. That's flying for Barefoot. From the front, let's see what a wheelie looks like. Nothing but clear Colorado sky. The first big test of today's Polar Monster Madness number five is coming up in a matter of seconds. As each competitor, paired by their qualifying times, goes head to head, side by side, over hills and cars in a race for the championship. The trucks have to weigh at least 10,000 pounds. And these monsters all run on gas or alcohol fuels. There's no nitro in monster car competition. So what you're seeing is raw four-wheel drive power. It's awesome and it's risky. But the drivers are well protected with helmets, neck braces, and fire retardant suits and gloves. Taurus and Snakebite are lining up for the first run. And here it goes. Who won? It's hard to tell with the way the dirt's flying here at Curacao's Polar Stadium. And we'll have to take another look while the fans hold their breath. It was a close run. Will the favorites stay alive? And there it is, Taurus by a tire length. They don't get any closer than that. Great run, great crowd again in Curacao. Yes, the crowd's wonderful, you know, the track's feeling pretty good, you know, the truck's handling real well. Snake was right there, but Taurus came out in front. Barefoot and Monster Patrol, nobody in their right mind would dare not sit still and watch this race, because this is what Monster Truck Racing is all about. Can the rookie take out the world champion? On the start, it is Monster Patrol with a whole shot. Barefoot fight, he can't do it, he can't do it. The truck designed by Jack Wilman Sr., the driver of the World Mud Racing Champion, has just taken out the World Monster Racing Champion. And when this guy comes back for the 1994 season, look out, Fred Schaefer, on your tail. The Barefoot Dodge had a good run. You can't take that away from him. But this time, Dodge fell to the Chevy Monster. The problem plagued Taurus prepares to go against the world champion barefoot torrent average time 3.79 seconds barefoot 3.67 a short but tough court here at the gator bowl in jacksonville florida they are lined up 
the green light will give them the go, and it's showtime! Barefoot and Taurus and Barefoot! Wheelie! Wheelie! Three quarters of the track! Barefoot! I don't know if he was showing off or if he was just excited and went for the win, but he won it on two wheels! Over the line! In the air! Look at this! Woo! High flying barefoot is in the finals against Equalizer. Taurus, he had a good run, but nothing to compare to the world champion. He's gonna have to wait to another more lucky day to take out barefoot. Tonight, it's barefoot and Equalizer in our finals. The picture tells the story. Brad, the semis against Taurus, and you're doing a little showboat, and I don't know if you did it on purpose, but a little wheelie there in between, kind of a nifty move. Uh, Jim, uh, really wasn't on purpose. Uh, Taurus is a real tough competitor, and as you know, when I come over with that first set of cars, I put it right to the floor and uh, sit back and let that Dodge motor do the work, and the thing wheel standing on me, I knew I couldn't let off. I just kept my foot in it. You don't let off again, people like Taurus, and just luckily, we came out real good over the second set of cars, and it was a real good run. Kodiak is back, Mark Bendler up in the saddle. This is race number three of our second round action. Kodiak's got a tall order to fill. He's going against Torres. Jack Wilman Jr., the former world champion, is up in the saddle. Both trucks are staying. There they go. Torres plays catch up and gets across the finish line first. He nails Kodiak. Jackie Wilman Jr. is taking this truck to the semifinals. Kodiak has problems right after the start. It happens right here over that set of cars. A bad hop. The suspension just doesn't seem to be dialed in for this track. He's all over the place. Taurus, a brand new design truck, a brand new power plant, and things are running flawlessly. That 2,000 pounds of weight in the back of that truck hold down the rear end and keep him smooth. He's got to come out and go past the world champion, Fred Schaefer, in the barefoot Dodge. Both trucks, no strangers to this track here in Pueblo. Fred Schaefer aboard barefoot, checks to make sure everything's all right. Equalizer driven by David Morris, the average time 5.14 seconds on this track to Barefoot's 5.36 seconds. Equalizer quite a bit faster than Barefoot so far today. And the question on everybody's mind is, can Barefoot defeat Equalizer? They come to the line, Equalizer and Barefoot, Chevy against Dodge, the world champion against the former world champion. And Morris would love to have that title back. Wait for the green light, they rev up. A whole shot for Barefoot. He pops a wheelie in no man's land. A wheelie down the track for Barefoot and he wins it. World champion. And David Morris just didn't have a prayer. Dodge took it down the track. Your winner, Barefoot, with a wheelie. Watch this, he powers up and the front tires never touch the dirt. Till the finish line. That's not racing, that's flying for Barefoot. From the front, let's see what a wheelie looks like. Nothing but clear Colorado sky. And Equalizer is out.
couldn't have turned out better in beautiful Curacao today if you'd written a script. Fans have been waiting all year for the big showdown, and here it is. Taurus, the most popular contender in the Caribbean, the granddaddy of all monster trucks in a winner-take-all showdown. Pride versus history. Nearly 3,000 horsepower between them. This is the race of races in monster truckdom, and here they go! Oh man, it's out of the pitch in a blaze of thunder and nearly over before you know it in a spectacular photo finish. Man, oh man, it just doesn't get any better than this. So Taurus wins it all with that magnificent ride we just saw. How did it feel like? Oh, it feels excellent. You know, the crowd's behind you. You just want to go. I want to thank everybody for having me here. I want to thank uh, Stuntman Promotions. I want to thank Jack Wilman for giving me the opportunity to drive his truck. And thank everybody involved. Wasn't that the best race you had of all the races you had here in Curacao? Yes, it was a very good race, very close race. Uh, probably, like you said, one of the best. So Alvin Depew of Granite City, Illinois with Taurus is the winner of the Monster of Madness in Curacao. And Felly will give him... Taurus is the champion of Monster Madness 92 in Curacao in the Dutch Caribbean. Over on the grandstand side, Gary Porter. On the pit side over here, the nightmare of Steve Hess. Okay, well, one of you people is going to have a bigger smile after this round is over. Okay, they're bringing him up to the line. Gary Porter, Steve Hess, they're at the line. Look at this. Gary Porter with Carolina Crusher takes top spot in the tire division and will take on Bill Wilson's equalizer tracks in the third and final round. But Steve Hess gave it all he had. If Gary Porter would have messed up just a little bit, Steve Hess would have a good, good close round. And here comes that guy. You are on board with Dan Patrick and Sampson. As he backs that beautiful Chevy up. Oh, this should be a great ride. Dan says the horsepower up on this truck about twice what it was last year. And that's what he's going to see when he hits that first set of cars. Nothing but the Metrodome roof. Now, you see them shut the motor off and raise their hands up, Mike. Well, RII, remote ignition interrupter, and that is something that shuts the engine off in case there was a problem. There is a gentleman standing on the sideline that makes a decision whether to kill the motor. And what they do is test that shutoff button. And that, when they raise their hands, then they shut the truck down. Another sign of safety from the good folks at USA Motorsports. It's going to be a great race. I mean, a great race. Patrick Allen. I think Dan Patrick and Sam. Uh oh. No, uh -oh. we got another one upside down. Uh oh. Executioner on its roof. I saw it coming, and there was nothing you could do about it. But, Ralph, I want to refresh your memory. He wasn't there, but I want to refresh your memory. Memphis, Tennessee, first race of the year last year. Executioner on its roof. Yep. Yep. Here it is again, Mike. Watch that right lane. The race is good. There's not a problem with the race. Patrick is just out. He covers it. He gets off to the side, but he can't stop it. He's out there on the, on the pavement, and the, it's just as slick as glass. He starts sliding. Then when he gets down here to the turtle shells, the truck rolls over, and there's nothing, absolutely not one thing that can be done about it. Those are the two bumps or set of bumps down there for uh, the Pro Arena truck course. And when he got down there into that, that's what really upset the balance. Well, maybe we could take a look at that just one more time uh, because of the, the way that went. Let's go on board with Sampson first, Mike, and see what Dan Patrick saw. And I guarantee you a lot of it is going to be the roof of the Metrodome. Oh, he had a beautiful run. Now, Still in, now he's in second gear and it's over with. Meanwhile, just off to his right. Yeah, that didn't take long, did Executioner it? was going upside down. There's Dan Patrick walking back after checking to see how his uh, yes, I'd like competitor to do that. was doing. 
this is going to be great because we're going to take a look one more time at what happened to the executioner. And I think it'll become very obvious this time around. Now watch when he comes off to the cars. He gets over on this side. This, there's no dirt over here. And this part of the arena is just becomes the floor is very slick. Well, there's no way of stopping the truck. And then he hits these bumps right in here and the truck just lays over on its side. Well, Mark Hall is the driver of the Executioner. He is out of the truck, and he is with Dave Burns. And he's been doing this a lot of years, and flipping is something he doesn't ever want to get used to. Mark, what happened at the end of the course? I don't know. I think we had a good run going, and uh, I, I, I don't know. I had a good run going, and then when I came off the uh, landed there, I think I got onto the concrete there a little bit, and then I got into the tough truck course, and that just put me over. So. Anyway, you, I mean, you were driving it, obviously, there at the end, but they're pretty tough to save when they're that far over. Yeah, we, we was working at it, but um, I don't know. I think it was just carrying too much momentum, and then, we, again, we got on that concrete and started sliding around. So. All right, quick exit in the side-by-sides for the executioner. If he can leave on him, he's got it. Both things we saw with Dose. Both, the, both sides of the track are fighting extremely well. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's any difference in the two starting lines at this moment. No, I haven't seen a bad lane yet, really. Recently, the drag race. Right, and we saw a bulldozer pull the front end up and run well in the far lane. We've seen snake bite do it twice. Could you tell? I think it was fun. I, Equalizer looked like he got off the line great, but I don't think he left him at the line like we thought he needed to. Didn't leave him at the line. Foot gets the win, we're told. So Bigfoot stays alive for now. And, you know, as you said earlier, Bob Chandler here tonight. A lot of pressure on this team to perform here on national television. Look at the equalizer truck come on at the finish line. He does. Beats him. Beats him. Not much, but he comes on real good. Let's watch this side to side. Look how the truck picks the front end up. Dan not fighting the steering wheel. It's, it's really a cakewalk for that man. And now it's Crusher and Digger side by side. Carolina Crusher has been doing a super job cutting a good light. Hey, Dennis Anderson can do the same thing and has been. Let's see what's going to happen. On the start, Carolina Crusher seems to get an edge. It's a close one, but Crusher wins by one hundredth of a second. The crowd is on its feet cheering for Carolina Crusher. Carolina Crusher has taken out everybody tonight by cutting a good light, almost anticipating what's going to happen, and he does it to Grave Digger. A close race, but Digger could not match the reaction time of Crusher. Gary Porter told us he had the flu. I think it's Grave Digger that's going boo-hoo right now. Jim Davidson is standing by with our winner, Gary Porter. Gary, get in here, man. Congratulations. You went ahead. Right. You beat Grave Digger in the finals. You put him away. But are you timing things? How are you doing this? How are you getting on the line and getting the whole shot on everybody? Well, I'm actually watching the power going up the drop cord to the light. That's how I'm leaving before everybody else is. No, I'm just trying to leave as quick as I can, watch the light, and trying to get a good whole shot. I've geared the truck, you know, accordingly for this track so I can make all my horsepower in 15 to 20 feet here and try to get, you know, the whole shot and get some mile per hour while I'm flying through the air. You're right on the line between redlining. I mean, if I was out there, if I was a USHRA official, I might be ready to pull the trigger on you for redlining because you're getting a jump like I have never seen before. Yeah, well, that's sort of the gamble we're having to take. And, you know, luckily I didn't red light at this race. And, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to cut them just as close as I can. Congratulations, man. Okay. I'm anxious to see now since they've regroomed these tracks and requested the drivers we're right at that four-second barrier. Let's see if anybody's going to bump into the four-second barrier. If that's the case, and the drivers were indeed right, they needed to change those ramps. Well, there is Gary Porter in the cockpit of the Chevrolet, the Carolina Crusher. There is the uh, Ford Power Wheels Bigfoot with Dan Runte. Believe it or not, that monster truck has a set of weld wheels on it. Famous racing family out of uh, the Kansas City, Missouri area. Now they're in the monster truck. And there is a look at the Carolina Crusher in the uh, foot box in there in the cockpit. Gary runs a transmission brake. Somebody using drag race and get him off the line quick. He left good with the Ford. But, oh, look at that Whoa. landing. Dan Runte. Runny's coming across. And a good reflex on the part of Gary Porter as he climbed on the binders. They popped the left rear off that uh, rim. 
So the power wheels Bigfoot taking the victory, but watch the landing and watch how close they get in the shutdown area. The rules say after the finish line, if one driver crosses over in the other driver's lane and contact is made, the driver that crossed over will be disqualified. Gary Porter did not make contact. Thus, the Ford's going into the next round, Gary. Well, Gary Porter, of course, climbed on the binders to give Dan Runte some room to cross his nose because some damage could have been incurred. Let's go back to the pits. Uh, Army? Dan, they, they, they fixed the ramps. You go under five seconds, so it looks like that was a good move. But what happened here? It come down, crossed up, Army. It just later, this is the problem we were having last year. The Ford with BDS behind us and this new MSD ignition that we're checking out, we're getting a lot of power. The truck leaves the ramp. It's torqued up. When it gets torqued up in the air, it crosses up in the air. It's something you have to deal with when the truck comes down. And it just, we're making a lot of power and we're putting it to the ground. But as soon as that truck leaves the, the ramp, it's got to unload somewhere. So the Bigfoot team will have a job ahead in changing the tire. Runty's teammate will be up. Look at that. You NASCAR guys can make a pit stop in 17, 18 seconds. They have to roll this. Equalizer up to the starting line. His competition is Taurus. How do these two trucks make it to the finals? Well, the tough, tough track has taken out everybody else. First of all, Equalizer, defeated first blood in round one, was beaten by Invader in round two and didn't even go to the semis. And Taurus, well, he defeated Invader, then took out Tropical Thunder, but was beaten by Carolina Crusher in the finals. Basically, these are the fastest losers running in the final. On the start, Equalizer with a great hole shot. Taurus battles to make it back, but he can't do it. What a close race! 4.57 for Equalizer, 4.63 for Taurus. Taurus has trouble stopping. He makes it, though, but your winner is David Morris and the Equalizer. Your winner here in Minneapolis, David Morris driving Equalizer. You know, it takes more than just coming out here and racing fast. You gotta hold your truck together. These guys both were out of the action, but were called to duty when other trucks broke. They gave us some of the fastest times and closest racing we've seen all day. David Morris drives equalizer to a win. Jim's with him. David, a hop, skip, and a jump, and there you are, the winner in Minneapolis. Tell me how things unfolded there. It's pretty confusing. Well, you know, I was out of the, uh, completely out of the race, you know, and I'm just tickled to death to be back in it now. You know, the other trucks were broke and they couldn't come back. So, you know, that kind of got me going there when I got to come back in the final race. So then, I, you know, what have I got to lose? I'm just going to go for it. Well, it's a long family tree. Barefoot couldn't make it. He stopped on the line. Invader couldn't come back. He broke against Barefoot in the semis. So there you are. You go ahead and jump two rounds, and you're in the finals against Taurus, who's replacing Carolina Crusher. Something in the air here in Minneapolis. I'll save it. You know, I'll take these wins however I can get them. Congratulations. Thank you. Up and it looks like it's gonna be the smash of all times on Monster Truck Challenge. We're about to have a championship. Equalizer and Taurus. Jackie Wilman, the reigning world champion, and Taurus and a Granite City, Illinois, going up against David Morris and the Equalizer at the Springfield, Tennessee. Jackie's smiling there. Is he gonna be smiling at the end of the track tonight? Now this guy is always smiling. David Morris out of Springfield, Tennessee, and the Equalizer. David's been driving for Gary Cook's Equalizer team for quite some time. He knows this truck. We're set to go with the final side-by-side -side in Oakland. On the line, the Equalizer had him, but Jackie Wilman comes from behind for a win. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Wilman and Taurus again running against the Equalizer. Now you remember earlier, the first round action, it was Taurus and Equalizer, and Taurus lost with Equalizer advancing. Taurus coming back as the fastest loser. He downed the Equalizer in our final, and now Jack Wilman and Taurus become the champion in Oakland, California. You know, in our interview with him earlier, he said he knew he had problems. They had gone out and retooled the truck. They did some suspension changes. They did some engine changes. Whatever they did, it worked. Here it is, the final. The first to roll was the equalizer. The one that stayed low, lean, and mean was the reigning world champion and the guy who's parked right now in the winner's circle.
the 1991 world champion, Jackie Wilman and Taurus, the winner in Oakland, California. Bedliner coming loose and everything else. Jackie's getting down from the truck, going over to talk with Dan Denner of Monster Truck Challenge. It's still a bad in Oakland. Problem is, there's only one championship trophy, and either Taurus or Barefoot is going to take it home here in the Oakland Coliseum. The Taurus Chevrolet, Jackie Wilb, two years ago, was runner-up to Barefoot for the World Championship. Then in 1991, Jackie Wilman won the championship. Who was second? His arch rival, Barefoot. There's no love lost. These guys have gone back a long time. Taurus would love to beat him here. Yeah, it was a tough race. I got spun a lot off the line, and I looked over and seen Bigfoot had his front end way up in the air, and I guess I got down on the ground first and uh, pulled it off. Well, tell me about the traction in your lane. Have you, you've been in both lanes now today. Which one do you think is the best? Well, the, the left lane is definitely the best. The cars are mashed now more. You're not getting as much air, but uh, Barefoot has lane choice, so more than likely he's going to put me over in the other lane. Indeed, he will put you in the other lane. Jackie Wilman is Barefoot is now lining up in that left-hand lane. Fred Schaefer out of Pine Street Beach, Illinois. We talked about the rivalry with Taurus, but Fred disputes the rumor that there's bad blood between them. Uh, most of his rumor, uh, we used to be on the same team. Uh, they used to be on my team, Jack Wilman did, and uh, it's mostly rumor. Well, I'll tell you what, two big Chevrolets are going to go at it out there. Uh, which Chevrolet do you think is going to take it? Uh, I think it probably won't be a foot. Uh, it's probably going to be a photo finish or a, a new video. I think it's going to be real, real close. Our times are almost identical today. Now, they say that one lane, a left lane, has got a little more traction. Do you find that to be a, a fact? Yeah, and uh, I had a faster time than he did in qualifying, so uh, I'll get that lane. The scene is set. The lift service is done. It's showtime. We're going to have to get the replay camera out for this one as Torres and Barefoot come across the line together. The indication from the U.S. Hot Rod Association is right there that the Torres Chevrolet has the victory. Let's watch him on the isolated replay, and then we're going to take a look at how they cross the finish line. Jackie Wilman bringing the Torres Chevrolet home with another victory over his longtime nemesis, Fred Schaefer, and the Barefoot Chevrolet. Pretty run for Jackie Wilman and Torres, and now watch him as they cross that finish line. They're not separated by more than a couple of inches, but it's enough for victory for Jackie Wilman and the Torres Chevrolet. There it is right there. You can see it. He barely knows it out barefoot. Torres wins it, and it's a tough pill for barefoot to swallow, losing to his arch rival. X marks the spot here at Louisville Motor Speedway where these two monsters will start. Invader, Ray Perkowski, first in qualifying today. And Predator, Alan Pizzo aboard, qualified sixth. Now, you've heard me talk about this X. As you can see, the X is very, very wide here at Louisville Motor Speedway, about two feet wide, and that's the starting line. Now, with a two-foot wide starting line and a close race, it's very important to line up as close to the end of that X as possible. On the start, Predator with a hole shot. Invader, the fast is qualifying battling back but now remember he's on the outside he goes a lot further on the outside now things change with predator on the outside invader on the inside invader takes a bad hop he's all over the track predator is going strong invaders battling back predator opens it up now can he hold on to this turn look at invader go look at invader go a very close matchup a very close matchup. Predator wins by three hundredths of a second. Nobody can say these two trucks were not giving it their all. Invader and Predator over the cars. Invader takes a bad hop. Predator takes advantage of it. Then going around the final turn, they almost meet. The tires almost touch. As they come across the finish line, Predator cuts from behind. Three hundredths of a second to win. Predator! Come to the line, the crowd is excited, and they have reason to be. Gary Wiggins and the Carolina Crusher out of Waynesboro, North Carolina, taking over the driving duties for Gary Porter. And Lyle Hancock in Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Both substitute drivers. Let's see what Lyle's strategy is. I'm not going to give him an inch. <laughs> I want to give everything I can get on this truck. Um, I've, raced, I've raced him before, and he, he's, he's a hard competitor to beat. The talking's over. Let's see what you got. Green light, showtime. Crusher and Digger. Oh! Oh, my 
my gosh, get to the shutdown area, guys. And you can't tell who won. The red headlights of the Gravedigger. The big yellow Carolina Crusher. A great run for Digger. A great run for Crusher. But which one won? Here's Mike Speller of the U.S. Hot Rod Association to tell us which truck won this monster truck final in Pueblo, Colorado. Well, that race was so close, and we looked at the video about four times, and we just could not predict a winner. So our rule says that when we're that close or it's a tie, the only thing you can do is run them again. And as they come around to restage, as we rerun the final in Pueblo, here's another look at that great run for Carolina Crusher. A tie in a final? You saw it here on U.S. Hot Rod Association's Monster Truck Challenge. They're back on the starting line. The Grave Digger and Carolina Crusher, neither one has had a chance to cool down between runs as we rerun our final here in Pueblo. Up to the starting line they go. This is going to be a battle, a war, as the two heavyweights go at it, neck and neck, tire and tire, door handle to door handle, Digger and Crusher off the line. And look at Grave Digger go. Both trucks running well, Grave Digger with an edge, he gets the win, he gets the win. This truck has not stopped all night long. He's dialed in, tuned in, and has a superb ability to handle this truck on a very, very tough course. Lyle Hancock with a win for the Grave Digger team, but it didn't come easy. You gotta give credit to Gary Wiggins and the Carolina Crusher. He defeated tough enough, and then the equalizer to get here. Then they had to rerun the final because we had a tie. The win goes again to Lyle Hancock and the Grave Digger. I needed a win, I'll tell you what. We've had a pretty rough season getting it started. I, I didn't think that guy run that hard. I told you, you know, it's like he's a, he'll come from behind and get you if you ain't careful. It was a dead tie there the first run, and man, I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull it off again. How'd you feel about running the second run? It was pretty good, actually. You know, the people got more for their money, you know, getting to see him do the best running trucks out there. And, man, I'll tell you what, it was something else. I, my heart was pumping on that one. The two trucks in the semifinals, Barefoot and Equalizer, have raced all year long. Nine times they've met. Barefoot's been victorious, six of those. Equalizer, David Morris, average time, 4.28 seconds on this track. Fred Schaefer's taken Barefoot to an average time of 4.36. Equalizer, actually faster. On the start, Equalizer with a hole shot. Can Barefoot catch up? Yes, just barely. Just barely barefoot by three hundredths of a second defeats Equalizer. An incredible win for the world champion, Barefoot. The picture on the finish line tells the tale. Barefoot, your winner. Jim Davidson is in the Barefoot camp with Fred Schaefer. Fred, you're out there tearing it up. You just put Equalizer away in the semis, but you had to come back to do it. But there's some mind games going on, on out there on the line. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I really didn't know I wanted the race was so close. Uh, they gave me a thumbs up on the way out the door. I really didn't know. I know it was a real close race. Kathy's here to say congratulations. And my friend, you are one step away from getting the win here in Pontiac. Yeah, thanks. Welcome back. You know, Andy Brass is simply on fire. Three straight runs in the fours, a 496 in round one, a 498 in round two. The last pass, the quickest ever, 494. And earlier, Army made this observation about his performance. Gary, you know, in, in forms of racing, like NASCAR racing and everything, the tires are so important. The announcers keep telling you how they're changing the stagger, they're changing the compound, or what have you. This sport is no difference whatsoever. Andy Brass was trying to find the handle. I'm going to show you what the handle was. These tires are normally the rear tires on this truck. Okay, the rear tires back there now are normally the front tires. What he did was take those tires and reverse them because there is a weight difference. The tire that's on the front now is actually lighter and used to be on the back. Now that he's got more weight on the back, he seems to be pulling in the times. He doesn't seem to be pulling in the times. He's starting the fastest in the world. But looking for the handle, you hear that term all the time. In this case, he was just moving those tires back and forth and swapping them. 
Back to you, Gary. Well, it certainly made a difference if, in fact, that is the reason why all these runs in the four-second bracket this afternoon. Well, you know, attention to detail, you've got, and all young racers know this, you have to pay attention to detail. Somebody had to take away those tires to know that they were lighter. That's, That's attention to detail. That's why you have a crew chief. Yeah. Your team members, there's Andy Brass, the far lane. He has lane choice for this championship. His teammate, Dan Runte. Runte leads. Now, Andy Brass, really, with only two more events left in the Pendant Point Series, has to knock off Dan Runte. Well, Andy Brass is, is the old pro. He knows what he has to do. Uh, Runte has played his hand. Now it's up to Brass to sneak in the back door and whack him in the head, and that's exactly what's going to try to happen. Here. I'm using terminology to let you know that Andy Brass still believes he can win this world championship. It'll be the fourth world championship if he does win it. So you're saying it's his experience that will make the exactly. difference in the final three events of the I, year. I believe so. They're both good racers. They're both good, good run for both of them, but Andy Brass takes the victory. Oh, wait till you hear these times. The first four-second final. 4.99 for Dan Runte in a losing effort. And Andy Brass goes a 4-9-1. And there is his ET once again, the first time ever. Both the finalists run in the four-second bracket. In the interview earlier, Andy said he would he thought potentially he could go into the four eights. I thought that was a little bit of hoping, but I tell you, a 4-91, he just a blink away from a 480 run, the quickest side-by-side -side ever. He did it. Let's go down to Andy. Gary, the license plate kind of tells the tale. 491, quickest ever. Got to take you to death. We understand that puts you back in the national points lead. Well, I'd have to look at the points. I don't know exactly where we're standing right now. I know we're going to be up there pretty close or right right behind him if we aren't not or just right ahead of him. Uh, the pass, I'm pretty happy with the pass. You know, we've been having a lot of problems with the truck. It just, it's, it's been running, it's been running good, but it's just not been just peak, you know. I mean, I can tell when the truck's running and, and when it's not, and it's been dealing us a fit this weekend. But like I say, there at the end, we started changing just all kinds of stuff. I changed my driving style, and I kept with the style that I did change to, and it seemed that we just started getting down to nines, you know, 497, 496 and that, and then that's where we stayed. Whatever you did, you did right. Congratulations, Andy. Well, thank you, Arm. And our congratulations to Andy Brass. Oh, he gets the bucket of ice water this week. That's becoming tradition now in the Bigfoot organization. That cools him off.